Well, good afternoon. I'm Wayne Adams with the board at Patriots Point. I'd like to introduce a, a couple of people. I, I welcome you here, by the way. It's a great crowd. It's a big day for Patriots Point. I'd like to introduce uh, one of our board members, Susan Marlowe. I saw her a little bit earlier. Oh, Susan. I always try to know where she is. Uh, Another of our board members, Mayor Will Haney here in Mount Pleasant. And I'd also like to introduce Chauncey Clark, who is our uh, chairman of our foundation, the Yorktown Foundation, who makes so many things possible here. And to thank our staff and our volunteers. We have a lot of volunteers that work with us every day to make Patriots Point what it is to our visitors. You know, one of the, this is one of the most significant days at Patriots Point. It may be the most significant day since the arrival of the USS Yorktown in Charleston Harbor 47 years ago. Since that arrival, we've become one of the top ship museums in America. We've become one of the top attractions in South Carolina, attractions that brings in over 300,000 veterans, families, school groups, and overnight campers every single year. The center of Patriots Point, of course, are our ships. Decorated histories of service to America. And as you can imagine, it's, it's a daunting task you know, to maintain the ships and to, and to take care of. To give you an example, in about 10 months, we're gonna celebrate the 80th anniversary of the USS Yorktown, the 80th anniversary of her commissioning. 50 years ago, I do wanna make a point that 50 years ago, when she was just decommissioned and, and released to us, they didn't clean up the ships the way they do now when they release them. So it was left to the museum that, you know, that took charge of the, of the ship back in those days, which makes it really tough. And I guess that brings us to the day. I want to thank the governor and, and, his, and his staff for the work they've done, the dedication they've had in tackling the environmental needs of the Yorktown. Um, it's been a months long process and Governor, y'all have never wavered once through the, through the process and we appreciate that. We also appreciate the support of the uh, General Assembly in appropriating the funds. Governor, I was thinking um, over the weekend that when you talk about the tens of thousands of jobs that have been created in South Carolina, the billions of dollars of new um, investment, capital investment, that those are such big things. They sometimes, I think, overshadow the work you've been doing in the environment to protect and preserve, to protect and preserve our environment. And I think that today is a heck of an example of that continuing record. We really appreciate it. We, um, we welcome you to Patriots Point. It's an honor to have you here. And let's welcome the governor of South Carolina, Henry McMaster. Thank you, Staff. If y'all would like to come a little closer, you can. If you can't hear or you don't, you can sit down if you like. It's not raining yet, but it might. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be brief, but there's certain things I do want to uh, tell you. And I thank everybody for being here. This, this has been a long road getting here for um, uh, over, over the years. A lot of people have been working to bring forward the history and significance of South Carolina, not only to the country, but uh, to the world. And this Patriots Point Museum, th these ships, and these people that have gotten here, gotten us here, have done a magnificent job. And there's a lot more history out there to tell that, that hadn't been told. Uh, I think that the the way we we approach 
our progress and happiness in South Carolina is, is there are three great pillars on which our strength and prosperity rely, and that is economic development, education, and the environment. And Patriot's Point combines all three of those. And you can't have one or two, you have to have all of them pulling together at the same time. And those are all uh, converging here today and have been for a number of years. So here are some facts just to go to a little bit of history and then in a minute I'll go to another piece of history. Uh, we are blessed with abundant natural and environmental resources that we must uh, simultaneously promote and strive to protect and preserve for future generations. That means it's not just one or the other, it's not a balancing test, they're all critical. Among our cherished environmental features is approximately 2,876 miles of pristine coastline, including roughly 200 miles of direct beachfront and also neighboring ecosystems such as marshes, estuaries, barrier islands, tidal creeks, which not only serve as a source of pride and enjoyment, but also generate or facilitate a significant portion of our economic investment and activity. And there are people here today who have, have spent many, many years in preserving and accentuating, protecting and presenting those assets. On October the 15th, 2018, I issued executive order number 2018-50 which established the South Carolina Floodwater Commission. Its purpose was to coordinate a comprehensive evaluation of all the state's accommodation, response, and mitigation efforts related to the impacts of flooding, storms, and other natural disasters, with particular emphasis on cities, communities, and enterprises located along the state's coast and rivers. In addition, the commission was to identify short-term and long-term recommendations regarding potential opportunities to minimize such impacts while also facilitating economic growth, promoting tourism, and assisting impacted areas. Among the Floodwater Commission's recommendations was the creation of a cabinet-level position of Chief Resilience Officer and the creation of the Office of Resilience. The General Assembly agreed, and on September 29, 2020, I signed into law legislation creating both. In April of 2021, I named Ben Duncan, who is here today, whom you'll hear from in a moment, the state's first Chief Resilience Office. The Chief Resilience Officer and the Office of Resilience are charged with developing and coordinating the implementation and co of a comprehensive statewide disaster recovery and resilience initiatives to do what? To enhance South Carolina's preparations for and responses to and ability to recover from natural disaster and other adverse events and conditions and to prevent natural disasters. So that brings us here to the Yorktown today. The USS Yorktown is an Essex-class aircraft carrier built for the U.S. Navy during World War II. You've probably seen it in the movies about those days. It has a storied history. The ship and her crew served with distinction through the end of the war and also during the Korean and Vietnam Wars. Decommissioned in 1970, the U.S. Navy donated the ship to the state of South Carolina in 1975 to do what? To become a museum ship at Patriots Point in Charleston Harbor. That has been accomplished. It is a notable presence on the Charleston Harbor and skyline and attracts, has been mentioned by Mr. Adams, more than 300,000 visitors a year, according to the authority. In 1986, the aircraft carrier was declared, declared a natural historic landmark. And I wondered about that briefly. It's in on the water, but I guess it can still be a landmark. If Dana Beach is here, he can explain that to us. <laughs> Ultimately, when the USS Yorktown arrived in Charleston Harbor, the ship contained significant ha hazardous contaminants that were not removed by the U.S. Navy. We've been told when it arrived there were still cigarette butts in the, act in the ashtray by the captain's chair. Mike, you remember. Uh, in 2013, the Patriots Point Development Authority commissioned a study by the Shaw Group to assess the environmental remediation of approximately 160,000 160, gallons of petroleum 
and 1.6 million gallons of impacted polluted waters and polychlorinated bifinyl components, compounds, that were not removed from the ship's 428 vessel uh, tanks and compartments by the Navy when they gave the ship to us. The study concluded in 2013 it cost as much as $4.4 million for the remediation effort. That was then. Continued corrosion of the outer hull of the vessel will inevitably lead to deterioration and failure of the inner tanks. If these hazardous materials leak out into the, from the Yorktown into the harbor, it will be a disaster. They will impair commercial shipping and boat traffic as well as doing immeasurable damage to the area's beautiful natural resources, the harbor's ecosystem, including nearby marshes, estuaries, barrier islands, tidal creeks, and beaches. Truly a disaster, not only for Charleston and the Low Country, but for the whole state. In my executive budget and state of the state address, I called on the General Assembly to authorize the Office of Resilience to expend a portion of the ARPA funds to conduct a complete remediation of these hazardous materials remaining inside the USS Yorktown. Here are some of them in this jar. Today, by virtue of the authority invested in me as your governor and pursuant to the Constitution and laws in this state, I have issued Executive Order 2020-20, directing the Office of Resilience to commission an updated cost study of the USS Yorktown remediation effort to remove all, I repeat, all hazardous materials that remain inside the ship. Once completed, the agency is also directed to begin the regulatory approval process to execute a procurement for the project and begin that cleanup effort. We are making great progress. Now I mentioned that is the history of today, but there's some other history that you may like to know about. Some of you have been in my office and you've probably noticed a framed drawing of the city of Charleston, or the town of Charlestown as they called it then, and it, I believe it was precisely from this point, the point of view looking uh, across the, the Cooper River uh, to Charleston. So I will read you briefly from what is inscribed on that drawing that's in my office. Now this was a long time ago. This is addressed to, and this is verbatim, to His Excellency James Glenn Esquire, Captain General, Governor, and Commander-in-Chief in and over His Majesty's Province of South Carolina, and Vice Admiral within the same. The prospect of Charlestown is humbly inscribed by his much obliged humble servant, B. Roberts, and I'll quote from what is inscribed. Charlestown, the metropolis of the province of South Carolina is pleasantly situated between the Cooper and Ashley Rivers, which form a spacious and convenient harbor. The climate of Carolina, formerly called Florida, is extremely agreeable and wholesome, and compared with the rest of the nor northern hemisphere, may well be looked upon as the most temperate part of the habitable earth on the north side of the equator. It is the fairest and most fruitful province belonging to Great Britain. It is well watered with a great number of fine rivers, some of them navigable for several hundred miles against the stream. It has odiferous wood green all the year and produces such fruit as they who once taste of it will despise the watery taste of that in England. Its silk is preferable to any and its rice is the best in the world. Provisions of all kinds are ex extremely good and very cheap and the, and, and the inhabitants of Charlestown are hurt by no particular distemper except such as proceed from intemperance. <laughs> Things never change. <laughs> so it is no wonder that Charlestown, which a few years ago was a small and inconsiderate place, be now a very great and flourishing town, adorned with handsome and commodious buildings, both private and public, among which the Church of St. Philip may justly be reckoned the finest structure in America. The commerce of this town is considerable for a happy period, having been put to the Indian War in the year 1715, all the neighboring nations of Indians 
have ever since courted the friendship and protection of this province, and a free trade is carried on with the Catawbas, the Cherokees, the Creeks, and the Chickasaws, and within a few months a treaty has been concluded with the Choctaws, a numerous, numerous and powerful nation consisting of 10,000 fighting men situated on the Mississippi River. And His Majesty, having been pleased to take this province under his immediate protection some years ago and to purchase the soil from the Lord's proprietors, it has since flourished to the degree that, finally, this town and province may justly be esteemed the most flourishing of any in His Majesty's dominions in America. Published according to the Act of Parliament by B. Roberts and W. H. Toms, June 9, 1739. Now, you see what we're doing? This is a special place for a whole lot of reasons, and it's been entrusted to us, and we have to be sure that it continues to flourish. So that is one of the reasons I'm so thankful to those who have led this effort for so many years and continue to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. And uh, Governor McMaster is one of our unsung heroes when it comes to the environment. I don't think he gets enough praise, but we have, uh, I know, Governor, a few years ago, you had one of your State of the State addresses and you talked about the beaches along South Carolina's coast being paved with gold. And uh, we appreciate the gold tie you're wearing today and understand and appreciate uh, your leadership on environmental issues because far too often we're not talking enough about them. And we're joined by other un unsung heroes on environmental issues today, unsung leaders. We've got the, the new Chief Resilience Officer, Ben Duncan, here today. We have Dana Beach and Faith James. We have Mayor, uh, Mayor Haney. We have Robert Boyles from DNR, Suzanne Marlowe. We have our state leaders. We have uh, House State Representative Mark Smith and uh, Chip Campson here with us today. And uh, we appreciate Mac Burdett and Wayne Adams for all of their leadership on this issue because as the governor mentioned uh, several years ago, there was a study done about the potential environmental consequences if this, the toxic materials inside the base of the Yorktown were to leak out, what devastating consequences it would have on our environment. And I have found out in my first year and a half in office, I've learned a lot of things, but one of the number one things that I've learned, I talk about this often, is the lack of communication and the gap between the federal, the state, and the local leaders to get things done. Because when we work together, we actually can deliver results for the community. And we did that just a few months ago in Mount Pleasant with Mayor Haney and the governor again with the renourishment of Crab Bank. And there are so many projects here in the Low Country. We appreciate the federal, the state, and the local leadership on that uh, for us because the Yorktown for us is a national treasure and this is a win for everybody. This is a win for uh, our community, the tourism that the Yorktown attracts. It's a win for the environment uh, and we saw that. I was at Isle of Palms last week watching the brown pelicans fly along our coast and we know the crab bank will be a great habitat for them and many other birds but seeing uh, public and private, federal and state and local come together for a project like this is enormous. So I want to thank all of you for your leadership and I personally, having grown up here, worked on a number of these uh, projects with our leadership here today. Look forward to continuing that very, very important work. And thank you. Ben Duncan, you're up next. Chief. Thank you, Congresswoman. First of all, I, I want to thank uh, Governor McMaster for always placing South Carolina's natural resources and the environment as a major priority in his administration, always focused on the state's future. Now, the Yorktown uh, is very important to uh, the South Carolina, its history, its tourism, and just the connection with all of the elements the governor talked about earlier. He talked about the contaminants that are on the ship, uh, all of the problems that it could cause to the natural environment of the state. And not only that, the economic environment in, the, in, in this area, in Mount Pleasant and in Charleston. Our team stands by and ready to begin the remediation process first of all, by additional study, 
and by updating all of the information that's out there regarding the contaminants in the ship. We look forward to collaboration with all of the state leaders, Patriots Point, uh, the Patriots Point's authority, the other state agencies that we'll be working with, DNR, uh, with uh, I think Mr. Boyles is here today, uh, and all, all of the other agencies, DHEC and others, uh, for, the, for the, the remediation of the contaminants on the ship so that we won't have problems in the future. Now, my staff is here also. You see some folk in, in blue shirts around here with the logo on it. There's, there's one standing here, and there's some others around. I say to them often, advantages go to those who pay attention. The, gov the governor has given it, uh, his attention to this. We understand the process. We understand the project, and we're ready to get working as soon as possible, and we we hope that we have all of the uh, assistance from all citizens of the state in getting this done. Again, Governor, I want to thank you for making this uh, something that we can get done as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm Will Haney, Mayor of the town in Mount Pleasant, and as mentioned earlier, a member of the board here, uh, ex officio at, at Patriots Point. Um, a lot of people have been recognized already. I want to recognize two more, uh, showing the importance of Patriots Point and the Yorktown to the town of Mount Pleasant. Uh, Councilman Gary Santos and Councilman John Icafano. If anybody else is here and I don't see you, I, I'm not leaving you out uh, on purpose. I do want to put, uh, I do want to put to rest any social media rumors out there that the governor was coming down here today to announce that the next sequel to Top Gun is going to be filmed here, although the way our state's going, that might be a, a possibility. But everything that happens at Patriots Point is important to the town of Mount Pleasant. And what we're doing today, I want to paraphrase our longtime state tourism tagline and say that protecting beautiful places causes smiling faces. Because what we're doing today is not just protecting the Yorktown and its environs, but we are protecting the entire port of Charleston. We're protecting our coastline. We're protecting our seafood industry. We're protecting the tourism industry, and we're protecting everything that is connected to it. Uh, my friend Dana Beach is here, a famous quote that I think he turned me on to from John Muir that said, when you pick up any piece of grass or any twig, you realize you're connected to the entire universe. So everything on that ship effectively can negatively affect the entire universe. This, this place, Patriots Point, is so important in that just on the 4th of July, 10 to 15,000 citizens celebrated our nation's independence right where we're standing. Housed on New Yorktown is the uh, Congressional Medal of Honor Society, the, the home of our nation's heroes, and this, in fact, is one of only three congressionally designated Medal of Honor sites uh, in America. And next week, they will be giving their national awards to citizens who do the equivalent of citizens' acts for which they were, they as members of the military were decorated for valor. All that centers right here on the Yorktown. Every year, hundreds of thousands experience Patriots Point, and that means they experience the town of Mount Pleasant. And this act today not only, uh, pr not only protects our natural resources, it protects thousands of maritime jobs, not the least of which is shrimping. And you all know what our shrimping fleet in Shim Creek, which is connected to Patriots Point, means to us in Mount Pleasant. It protects ecotourism, which is a growing industry in our state. Recreational boating, as we see the College of Charleston sailboats out there right now that are open to the public. And of course, it protects our beaches, because if any of that 1.6 million gallons of contaminated water got loose, I'm sure that, that um, the beaches would be affected and maybe even closed from that as well. Mount Pleasant has been a leader in reducing plastics from our, our salt waters, from our marine habitat. We've just enabled uh, septic tank removals by an act of this council. We've cleaned up the stormwater discharges from the town of Mount Pleasant that, that ends up in our marine environment. And we are set to be a leader in flood resilience by the things that we're going to adopt that have to do with stormwater and with runoff. And uh, we appreciate the governor creating 
uh, Floodwaters Commission to help us come up with those guidelines in establishing the Office of Resiliency. And this today gives us a more resilient and more vibrant coast. And I want to thank the governor and the leaders of our legislature for this great moment. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, thank you. I'm really big on audience participation. Those of you sitting, can you stand up so you can look behind us and see what's at stake here? Please join in. Just take a good look around at the Vista and take a look at this. Friends, the water, you can have a seat now. Thank you. I'm Robert Bowles. I'm with the Department of Natural Resources. And I'm supposed to keep you standing for a long time. Not. The waters of Charleston Harbor are the life force of this city, its environment, its economy, its culture, and its history. Over 1.3 million people live on our coastline, 800,000 of which live in greater Charleston alone. The wildlife and the habitats that make these places special are the reasons people want to come here and immerse themselves in the history the culture and the natural resources and in competing well in a global economy. You can rise with the sun and surf fish from the beach. You can boat after work or even some of us are blessed to be able to boat to work, taking in all that nature has to offer. You can wildlife watch on so many places in different landscapes along our coast. And Charleston Harbor underpins a dynamic and healthy food web that has supported humans for millennia, from shell mound build building Paleolithic Indians to, day to today's shrimpers, crabbers, and recreational anglers. We referenced earlier today, just around the corner from here, a major ecosystem restoration habitat creation project at Crab Bank to make a habitat for the birds so they can enjoy a lot of what makes this place special. Birders, wildlife watchers, boaters, anglers, people who make their living from the water. From our home port across the harbor, South Carolina DNR biologists head out every day to study the birds, the fish, the shrimp, crabs, shellfish, and sea turtles that live here. For the most part, what they find is that our coastal waters and wildlife remain healthy and resilient. South Carolina's expanses of protected lands and intact salt marshes, including those around Charleston Harbor, buffer our communities from flooding and provide shelter to marine life. The pollutants stored aboard the USS Yorktown are harmful substances that pose a long-term risk to the health of the harbor, its wildlife, and our community. In 1999, we saw what can occur from the impact from pollutants when the motor vessel Star Aviva had an accidental release of 24,000 gallons of fuel oil in the Atlantic off of Cape Romaine. It impacted thousands of coastal birds. Again, in 2012, we saw the impacts of pollutants on our wildlife, salt marshes, and the people, when a recreational shellfish bed had to close due to an accidental release from the MV Everreach spilling approximately 12,500 gallons of oil into the Cooper River. Two of the pollutants found in the Yorktown are polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs, and polychlorinated biphenyls, or PCBs. And folks, these substances are not water soluble which means they can accumulate in the sediment and would sit at the bottom of Charleston Harbor where they would remain for a long time if we don't remove them. So today marks a momentous occasion in keeping these coastal resources in Charleston Harbor special for the people who live here, the people who work here, the people who come to play here and to raise a family. Access to clean water is a fundamental right. And in South Carolina, we are blessed. We are blessed to
to have a great deal of clean water. We owe it to present and future generations to take these steps to reduce the risk of these pollutants from entering Charleston Harbor. The impacts of these pollutants are known, they're real, and they're sometimes long lasting. Today, we gather here to celebrate the proactive remediation and removal of these pollutants from the USS Yorktown. And we thank Governor McMaster, our elected officials, for their leadership to ensure that future catastrophes such as these never occur. The Fighting Lady has welcomed thousands to teach about concepts like duty, honor, citizenship, and country. Today, we celebrate these attributes as we announce the plans to remediate the Fighting Lady and ensure that she can continue to tell her story to the low country and to the world. Thank you. Questions? Answers? <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Well, the, <clears throat> the study in 2013 wasn't an, an urgent. There were no were no urgent needs there. And then the other thing is just money over the years. Well, we're trying to get ahead of it. And that's one of the reasons for the study is to see exactly where it is at this point. First, we'd have to go through the process of, of request for proposal. Uh, that usually takes a, a couple of months. And then from there, uh, getting the contractor on board. And I would imagine if we're just updating the study, no more than three, four months. Just to get an understanding of where we are. Any more questions? Yes, sir. That's, that's a big question. I guess part of the answer, maybe the main part of the answer, is just being aware of how precious it is, how fragile it all is, and has, how important it is for a variety of reasons to see that we protect it. Okay. Thank you very much.